Hey everyone, welcome to another episode of Grappler Union Podcast, Javier Plummo alongside Anthony Zito. Our guests today are Gabriel Wilcox, who is a fifth degree black belt, Andre Maneco, third degree black belt, and Alex Viana, who is a brown belt. Enjoy. I need the six minutes. That's what happens in that six minutes. You told me we're using any tactic that works. Never to limit myself to one style. Keep an open mind. We're not here to take part. We're here to take over. In order to become more peaceful, in order for you to become better, and, and strategize your life. All right, we're live. Live with donuts. What is going on here, Zito? Donuts. Well, I just I I figured more people would eat, but it's just only a few of us are eating donuts. It's okay. Sorry, right. Gabriel doesn't eat donuts. <laughs> no, I'm He's fat. He's wisely. <laughs> wisely. Yeah. Not down on this donut train either. Although I, I like how you tried to tempt me here with this delicious bacon maple yeah, yeah. donut. Trying to tempt me with that, that healthy protein right there. <laughs> it's paleo. <Yeah. laughs> it's an authentic paleo donut. Yeah, I don't uh, know what that word means, but I'm sure right. it's right. You, clearly it applies here. <laughs> uh, so we have Gabriel Wilcox in studio uh, from Brazil. Uh, what part of Brazil? Rio de Janeiro. Uh, yes. I can tell by that accent. Actually, <laughs> I, I can't tell, but I can pretend like I can. <laughs> <laughs> Alex Viana and, of course, Andre Maneco joining us. We're surrounded. We're surrounded. Yeah. And we're yes. outnumbered today. Yes, for sure. <laughs> Best behavior. So um, we were talking prior to going live about, you know, IBJJF and stuff like that. But I was uh, talking, I wanted to know about Gabriel's match against Bruno Malfasini. This is in 2011 you fought him. Was that one of the times? If you fought him more than once? No, just one. Just that one time? You thought you won at the end. Cause yeah. That was the first time I saw the match. I was like, oh, you won. I'm like, because you were really happy. Yeah. I mean, you're always smiling regardless. But <laughs> <laughs> you were happy. You're like, oh, yeah. And I, I couldn't really. They didn't have the points on the screen. This is all prior to all that stuff. So I didn't know what was happening in the match. What happened at the end? What happened? Um, I, I was thinking the match was tied because in in my mind I I two times I swept him and he swept me two times too but my my last points uh, the referee didn't give me because uh, when I swept him go outside you know yeah. and I didn't know that when I looked at the score and I oh I'm winning I'm four and he's two no but is is was yeah, different yeah. huh yeah, he know. was four and I'm uh, I was too. I remember in uh, the last last minute of my fight, I we stand up again, and I I stop and I think I'm winning, but I I was losing, you know. Yeah. And he he didn't try to touch me, and I and past few seconds, hey, something wrong, you know. <laughs> <laughs> Why is Bruno Malfasini comfortable losing yeah. by two points? <laughs> And I, I, I heard my student very far try to, to say to me, hey, you are losing. I, I remember when I look at my, 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 my students and, oh, they, I'm, I'm, lo I'm losing, you know, and try to do something, but doesn't have a time anymore, you know. Yeah, you pull and try to sweep him. Yeah, yeah. I saw that. And uh, the, the worst <laughs> thing is I'm, I, I had a, I'm full of energy, you know. I I'm I'm heavier than him. I think I'm stronger than him, and I lost my uh, uh, one minute, the last one minute to do something, you know. Mm -hmm. I know one minute it's, it's long, you know, and I lost the time. Yeah, and it happened. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Okay. So you fight at light feather. Yeah, that on that time it's it's. I think it's it was a qualifying for Abu Dhabi, Abu you know, Dhabi, something yeah, yeah. like. Uh, six five kilos yeah. between light and uh, uh, between uh, fed uh, light feather and feather. Oh, I see, I see. And man, back so twenty eleven. I think twenty eleven. Oh, it's not too long ago. It's like, but they had like puzzle mats on the floor. It was like <laughs> it definitely very, looked different. It right? looked totally different. I was like, oh my god, what year is this? But I'm looking at this. It's twenty eleven. I'm like, that's not too long ago. They have <laughs> no just puzzles just thrown together. You what? ended up on the on the on the wood at one point when you were going for a takedown. It was a good. It was a good fight. Yeah, it was a really good fight. Where yeah. was this one at? 
It was. Uh, I don't know where it was at. It was in Rio. It was okay. in Rio. Okay, yeah. But it was. Uh, yeah, it was. It was fascinating. Your takedowns. You just. They were really, really good. I know he's uh, he's really good, but uh, I lost. I lost uh, that on that time. You know. I lost this, you know. I lost uh, a chance to beat him, you know. Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, I always like to fight against the big names because it's good for me, you know. <laughs> yeah, of course, right. Yeah. Now you've been, you've been doing jujitsu for a very, very long time. So yes. when when you started jujitsu, how old were you when you started jujitsu? Thirteen. I was thirteen. 13. All right. So that's. Uh, you were thirteen, nineteen, eighty-nine. Uh, Thirty years. 30 years. Yes. Jesus. <laughs> you and I are the same age, right? You were born in 1975? 75. 75, yeah. All right, nice. Yeah. I did a judo when I was young. When I was 13, I used to sailing, sail, sailing. Yeah. Uh, inside the club where, close where I live. And on that time, Murilo Bustamante started teaching over there. And that's why I, I start. That's what so you, so you did judo before you even started jiu-jitsu? Yes. I did so a it's, it's 30 years of just jiu-jitsu and then some more years of judo. Yeah, I, I, trained jiu -jitsu, I trained judo uh, something like five years when I was was kid. Wow. I compete a little, mm -hmm. just national, not so big, mm -hmm. but I used to train judo when I was kid. <laughs> yeah. So keep up with it at all? I mean, you, you were saying he's got good stand-up, a lot of judo-based stand-up? or. Uh, I think judo can can help me a little, but uh, in the middle of my way in jiu-jitsu, uh, I train wrestling too, you know, and can help me too. Both can help me for the base, right. for the stand-up. <laughs> Definitely agree there. Yeah. Javier is a, a judo black belt. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I, it's, you guys are going to meet up one day. One day, that's your one plan. Day, you're gonna... You guys are going to meet up in, in, in the IBJJF. He's not a black belt yet. Yeah, he, he's not coming down to my division, so I, it's going to have to wait until I can come up to his. Yeah, yeah. The donuts are right there, man. Donuts are right here, man. Oh, oh you know, up, up, oh, up, okay. oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> up in rank, yeah, yeah. for sure. Yeah, because yeah, you're a Masters 3. 3. He's <laughs> Masters 3 also. Yeah. So, But uh, when did you get your black belt? 2000. Yeah, that's uh, <laughs> it's an interesting challenge you're trying to set up for me there, sir. It's fast. I just it's fascinating. I mean, you know, it's just it's because you know you can't really you're going to go, be able to go against a legend, and it's just so cool. Like everyone, it's just such a neat thing for me to like play out. You know, oh, oh, just yeah, to be no, able to uh, see people still at high level. You have you compete in adult divisions as well. Yes. <laughs> so, Jesus, that's amazing. And, uh, like, at some point. I'm going to get a black belt and there's going to be a dude in my division who's basically been doing jujitsu almost as long as I've been alive. Right. Like, like how, how awesome, but also how horrible is it that some dude out there is going to get his black belt and his first black belt match ever is going to be like against like Megaton Diaz. <laughs> you know? <laughs> yes. you know? Good yeah. luck on that. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Like, <laughs> welcome to black belt, sir. <laughs> that is that is that like the whole thing is like when you get your black belt, it's like now you start all over again. Yeah, yeah. Because now it's just all black belts, and then it's just those black belts who've been in the game so long, and they're just coming down. You have to just keep fighting your way back up. It's a fascinating. It's amazing. For some people, it's the end. For some people, it start again. Yeah, you know, mm -hmm. it's the beginning. Yeah. 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 Man. And nowadays we have like so many black belts on the divisions right now. Like I would say ten years ago to become you know, master world champ you had to fight like one or two times. Right. Now to become a world master, you know, my black belt, world master you have to fight like five, six times. Yeah. The brackets are so big, like yeah. so many black belts are there, yeah. so Yeah, the event is huge. It's I mean. huge. Even <laughs> open sometimes you never go for open like to fight one or two times, mm -hmm. always like I'm talking about like Master 4, Master 5. You got to fight everywhere. Mm -hmm. Every division like, is full of black belts from everywhere. Mm -hmm. It's beautiful. Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. I mean, I just show you how much jiu-jitsu is growing. Yeah, it's so just, it's just everyone's just getting, getting, staying with it and getting black belts and the family's just getting bigger and bigger and bigger. <laughs> Whew, man. I mean, how, how much bigger can Master Worlds I mean, how much bigger can that stadium get? I mean, we're talking last year was like 
five thousand competitors. There, there's a lot of room like in that. that. Yeah, in I mean, that I know location. there's a lot of room in yeah. that, but I mean, can, can you imagine seeing like? All right, well, Master Worlds, you know, 2025, 10,000 competitors. I mean, it could they <laughs> have, it'd be like a whole month of jujitsu, right? It could be, <laughs> right? I mean, yeah. think about it. It could get that big. Well, at, I mean, at some, some point. It, it, it's already become basically almost a week long event. Yeah. You know, right. like, I, I don't know what it used to be because I didn't compete in it before. You know, you guys obviously. Uh, obviously had but you know most of the tournaments are are a saturday sunday affair most of them you know the local yeah, one. masters world basically starts on a wednesday mm-hmm. you know that's that's crazy to sunday. When wednesday to sunday yeah. Right? yeah yeah when you think about that really that that's nuts it's also very hard for me to explain to my boss who doesn't really understand what i do <laughs> and he's like take your days off <laughs> yeah he's like you can have the days off and everything but like you're doing this for a ju Jitsu tournament? <laughs> what does that, what does that well, even he gets, mean? At least he gets it right. This is not like so. This is your karate thing, right? Yeah, well, I mean, he's looking at the paper and spelling oh, it out with okay, me. Yeah, yeah. Okay. So yeah. that's the only reason he knows what it's actually called. Yeah. But yeah, yeah. No, I I need to go to Vegas for a week because of a jujitsu tournament. I promise you, if I if I can, I'll bring back you know a shiny medal or, or at least a, a picture showing that I was actually there. And his in his mind, he's like. Needs a week off in Vegas. Marriage probably isn't going right. to work at all. <laughs> <You know? laughs> right, right. Yeah. That's always the that's always the hardest part. Like no, nobody ever bats an eye when I ask to go some when you know, I ask for time off and I'm going somewhere that sounds like not that exciting. Right. Like, yeah, no, I need to take time off so I can go to this tournament over the weekend. You're going and, to the Cleveland Open, right? Yeah. <laughs> I haven't done Cleveland. But like I I did have to go and, and help out at Milwaukee one time and they're like, Why do you need the weekend off from Milwaukee? I'm like, Oh, it's a two day event, you right. know, I, I want to be rested the night before this that and the other thing and yeah that got that got weird looks but no real question marks right you know but, but vegas but vegas <laughs> vegas always gets the question <laughs> yeah plus my my boss one of these days is threatening to come with i'm like oh that added pressure you yeah. know I, I don't really need that no you, you don't know. need that i don't need people from my civilian life seeing what i do civilian. <laughs> <laughs> talk about the number that you're talking about like ten thousand people in one tournament uh, about a month ago, I went to Brazil to fight the Brazilian Nationals. Yeah. Actually, Gabriel, he fought against Paulo Miao. It was a good match on a, on a quarterfinals. And it was like seven minutes. Was, the game was tied one one yeah, yeah. And then ended up losing his back. And then Miao took, uh, uh, took the victory. But uh, talk about the number on that tournament, specific that tournament, it was like 8,000 people fighting wow. Brazil. It was one week of tournament. So the referee was there where he was complaining about like how tired it was like to be standing up for like 10, 12 sure. hours a Jesus, day for yeah. seven days straight. Like it's a very mental job too. It's not just mm-hmm. like be standing mm-hmm. over there. You stand over there, but plus you've been thinking about like, you know, points and, and techniques all day mm-hmm. long. It's, mm-hmm. it's really tough for the referees. But like I said, it's, it's a lot of people competing like nowadays in jiu-jitsu like 8,000 p- competitors in one tournament is something that uh that's, that's crazy yeah, yeah the yeah, brazilian yeah. nationals how's that rank in the IBJJF? is that that's a there's a that's a top one right there's a weight uh three they it's should three. wait yeah i'm fight the, the i'm going to japan um on thursday to yeah. fight the asian uh the master asian uh-huh. uh it's times four and I don't get it because I don't know. Because national should be. National, Brazilian should be national like, one of the yeah. toughest tournament yeah, in, in for Brazilian be. Jiu-Jitsu. And weighs, you know, three. And now I'm going to talk you and find this tournament. I have like only two guys in my bracket. And it weights like times four. Huh. So there's a lot of points I'm going to be making if right. I take first place in Asia more than I would have taken the in Brazilian, Brazilian nationals. nationals. Right, and so, smaller divisions. Yeah, and, and the smaller yeah. division. Huh. But they pay in a Brazilian national for first place, I think 8,000 reais for first place in adult division. So they now start like reward money. That's cash. like $2,000 for, for okay. those. Students. Yeah, yeah Thank but, you for wow. but in Brazil, yeah. 8,000 dollars, 8,000 reais is a, like That's... four months of uh, <laughs> work, you know what I yeah, mean? Yeah. So they start like putting money on, on the table now for us. So who, nice. who's who's putting them? Is it, is it the sponsors? Is the Gi sponsors? Or, or is it the I IBJJF? Don't have, I don't have the information. Yeah. But I believe it's come from IBJJF. No, I don't yeah, think. Just giving it's, back. Yeah. yeah. Huh. That's no, great. It is beautiful. No, it's it's fantastic. Great. So yeah. I was I was in Brazil last, last month as well. And so what you were talking, there's two things I noticed the difference about training there. One, like what you were saying, like with explaining to your boss, like, 
like one of the big differences now there's people just know what jujitsu is like even like <laughs> right. like it's like older given. relatives i was like you know are you gonna go you know with your cousin like you know train jujitsu like they're not like confused about what that is it's right. like a part of the culture and the other is like you know you meet someone in the united states it's like how long you've been doing jujitsu it's like four years five years oh man you've been doing this for a while like just everyone down there has just been like doing jujitsu like just forever right like, like half the blue belts i train with that just kind of like you roll with them for a little bit and you're like no, you've been doing this for like 15 years now. Like you can, you can just tell there's just so many people like Gabriel who just like, yeah, no, I just started when I was like five. Right. <laughs> it, is they, a, it is a different thing there. And how, yeah. how do, in, in Brazil, do they, do they promote slower in Brazil or they, they kind of, or is it just, dep- everyone does it differently over there? Depends off the teacher. Is that the teacher? Okay. Yeah. Where, where I came from is from Carson Grace team, uh, used to to take long uh, to get the the belts, you know, it's not easy. Uh, but now a lot of people train around the world. Uh, easy to learn wherever you go, you know. Uh, everything is is faster right mm. now. A little yeah. bit more yeah? information. So wherever you stay, you know. Yeah. Uh, yeah. I'm switching my mind. I give uh, uh, for my student. I give the the belts a little bit early compared to ten years ago, of I course, see. because more information. You know, they yeah. they can prove so faster, faster. Right, right. Uh, that makes sense. Yeah, well, that's that's true. Now, your school is in Rio. Yes, I have my own school where I live in in, in Urca neighborhood under the sugar loaf. Uh, I did a physical education. I. I, I, I build my gym where I live, up to the my house, and I teach in downtown too, in one big company in there. Yeah. Wow. Fascinating. So there's a, is there a lot of competition, I would assume, in Rio, right? It's got to be like California, like there's just jujitsu everywhere in California. In Rio, it's the same thing, same type of situation. So do, do you get a lot of, is there a lot of cross-training in in Rio, is there like people guys that just come in that you don't know who they're from or they're from a different academy? Do you allow them to come in? How how's that work in in Brazil in in your academy? Of course, I have a lot of good guys keep uh, living in Rio and compete there. But uh, in my opinion, uh, the the best most of the best names the best guys they move to somewhere in europe or or in in america you know um still have a lot of competitor competitor there but it's not the same level to the the time i i start compete you know uh rio de janeiro was the biggest city of the world when i when i when i start you know and this growing uh, inside Brazil, you know, uh, Rio, Rio de Janeiro start lose a little bit for some different states, and now this now uh, I think in America it's better than than Rio. I think in Brazil, in my opinion, uh, exploded, you know. And uh, if, for example, if if I wanna be a top of my my division. I have to travel around the world. I have to come to USA and compete, you know, because it's I have more uh, I have more chance to to stay close to the the, the biggest names, you no. Know? Just for you to understand, guys. Uh, uh, close to uh, all my friends who compete, love love compete they are not in brazil anymore i know it's sad but it's true <laughs> yeah. i mean yeah. it's great for us yeah you know it's good for, I, for, I, for obviously for the- i i appreciate that we've got so much talent here in america now and everything but yeah like we've talked about it um with with other other people on the podcast i've talked about it with my coaches and whatnot you know it, it's actually pretty strange and i did not know that that the brazilian national wasn't as many points as as some of the other tournaments like the Asian Open yeah. or, or uh, regardless. Um, but like some of the really, really good talent that is still in Brazil, a lot of them, it seems, can't afford the travel. So like I get told occasionally, and I, I don't have a list to, to hand out guys, but uh, I get told occasionally by one of my coaches like, oh, you want to keep an eye on this kid? He's coming up, doesn't come from a good family. If he doesn't get sponsored, 
you're probably never going to hear from him again. Like unless uh-huh. he, cause, cause it's going to be hard for him to le- like qualify for worlds as a black belt one day, if he doesn't have the money to travel to all the high point tournaments. Mm. So like, yeah, like, like, like that, that's a real weird situation. Obviously I, I I'm not dealing with it, mm-hmm. you know, personally, but I, I'm seeing it from, from the outside looking in. It's a weird situation where there's a bunch of really talented people that are in Brazil in, in the motherland of the art, as it were that, uh, that, yeah, we, we may never, really know about them if they can't do gyms do gyms from the united states like like kind of like so we have like baseball in the united states right so people go out and they scout you know what that means scout they'll scout like oh this guy we want to get him on our team so they'll go out and they'll scout different people from different high schools and colleges and they'll say oh he's up and coming we want to get him in this college or in this team do schools in america I mean, you don't have to name it. Do do they go to Brazil and scout certain people so they get them on their team, whether it be for whatever Gracie Baja, Otto, whatever, any of the schools? Do you think that happens where people come down like, eh, this kid's gonna be good? I ah, just come to my states. We're gonna take care of you. We're gonna sponsor you, and you're, you're gonna do jujitsu under us, and that's it. Does that happen in Brazil? Yes, I, I was gonna. I'm gonna answer both questions because it's a very similar question that sure. you guys are like talking about the same subject. Nowadays a little bit different because a lot. Of, nowadays a little bit different because uh, jujitsu grows so much in the academy. They have more money, so they have alliance in Brazil. They have alliance in Europe. They have alliance in America. So now, yes, they would have scouts out, out out there in Brazil to bring those fires over there. Mm. Even though it's young talent, they don't have much money, much you know, resource to come to America. Nowadays, it's easy for them to come because, uh, because those big academies, the big teams can sponsor them. You know what I mean? Those big teams they sponsor those kids. It's not like in Brazil have so many talents, but they cannot come to to America to compete. Yes, they can. They can. The only problem sometimes is the visa. That's a big mm. issue because the money they can get is sponsored to come to Brazil. But America, to get in America through the immigration is the point. Mm. You know what I mean? Yeah, if yeah. you have no income, what do you do in America? Right. If you've never been a champ, what do you do in America? Try to get your first championship. It's kind of tricky to get to pass the immigration to get in America. That's one of the things. That's uh, the, right. the, 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 the good talent, they stay in Brazil till they cannot come. And uh, answering your question about like, People go to Brazil and bring people to America. Oh, yeah, big time. Right now, I'm doing this. I'm bringing me uh, BL, Gabriel Ilcox, to help us in our training. Yeah. He's an exceptional fighter. Mm-hmm. He's still fighting a dojo visa, even he's 43 years old. But he got a big history in Jiu-Jitsu. He learned Jiu-Jitsu from the best. He's of course some great black belt, like Murilo Bustamante and all this, you know, big names back in the day so he came from a good school he's still fighting really well so I'm trying to bring him to America to work with me right now mm-hmm. because it would be good for my students for myself mm-hmm. for him and like I said he's is growing Jiu-Jitsu is growing so much it's it's no more um, border for Jiu-Jitsu right you know what I mean everybody go, everybody go everywhere Whatever they right. wish to compete, yeah. they can get a sponsor, they can get money. But the most probable thing is the immigration when you come to America specific. Mm-hmm. Yeah, but yeah. the the pond is 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 really big. So uh, like the experience you're talking about, it, it's it's really different over there. Like I was trained at Cicero Costas like five years ago, mm-hmm. right? And like I had, you know, you go in there and there's a it's a class that's not even on the schedule and it's just full of people and just Leandro Lowe just like screaming at people to train harder. And, um, you know, I go and I train and just, just like get demolished. And this is when I started to experience like, you know, teenagers, like just smashing me. And it was like, how long have you been training? He's like, oh, for like 13 years. I'm like, how old are you? He's like, oh, I'm like 16. But then like we would go out and eat afterwards. And like, I, I was talking to them about like what their life is like, like, this is like the, the people who are trying to make it right. Like at Cicero Costas. And they were talking about like, you know, I have an hour and a half bus commute every day. Right. They're like, on the weekends, I go work the tables at a tournament, right? And I will earn like 50 highs. And my bus fare for the week is 70 highs. And like they show up in the morning and they have like one gi. They train for like three or four hours. They put the gi on the sidewalk to dry in the sun. 
they go get some meal that's like rice and eggs and a big bottle of water and they sprinkle some tang in it and they go back and they put that same gi on and they keep training and like i remember they were talking about they get this faraway look in their eyes and they're like man like the meows they get to sleep on the mats they're like if i could just sleep, sleep on, the, on the mat like i'd never seen anyone like talk with such like wow. wistfulness like if i could sleep on the mats my life would be so much better. Like if I could just, right. if I could just do that and I was just like, can, can I pay for lunch? Would that be cool? Like if <laughs> right. I, like, if, you know, it's, it's, can just I help different, somehow? Right. Yeah, it's just like the, it's like this hoop dreams. Like I've never, cause here like jujitsu is, it's kind of like a middle-class thing. And like to experience like this, like this is my way out. So like if I can just right. get like what Andre is saying is, is I, I think true. Andre obviously knows more than me. Like you can get to the United States, but you have to get to the top of this pyramid that is like really rough to get to the top of in a way that just doesn't, I don't think we experience here as often. Do you no. think that's right? Yes. Yeah. I agree a hundred percent. I, I mean, speaking personally and maybe someone out there, you know, has had a different experience, but everyone I know who does jujitsu grappling in general, but jujitsu in particular here in America. Yeah. Most of them are fairly well off where it, I can afford the lessons. Obviously yeah. there's a couple of exceptions there, but also I've never really seen anyone who wasn't like planning on going into fighting maybe yeah. who felt like, like this is my road. This is my path. Um, to change my life. Yeah. Like mm. this is, this might be my road or my path because this is my passion. Mm. This is what I love most. But, uh, yeah, I, I, I've, I mm. don't think I know anyone who's like getting out of poverty by doing it. The closest I think you can get here that I I've, I've seen personally is if you go to, uh, unity in New York where mm -hmm. I've trained at too. It's like, so I was there for work. So I didn't have a lot of time. So I went to like the 6am class and you go and you walk in and there's a curtain. And like behind that curtain, is there's right. like 20 teenagers sleeping, sleeping on, on futons and on the mats. And I was like, oh, you've recreated Cicero Costa Sao Paulo in the middle of Manhattan. This is wild. And you just Whoa. train like in pools of sweat and like on the other side of the, the curtain, they're just sleeping. Like this is the next <laughs> level of the dream is like you then get to like live in essentially a jujitsu hostel in, in Manhattan. Wow. That's yeah. crazy. Does it sound appealing to you though? No, not at all. Because oh, right. no. <laughs> you want your privacy and your. Well, yeah, your, I'm. I'm not. I mean, maybe if I was, donuts. you know, at that at that age, I don't even know. I don't know. Maybe. Yeah. I just that's just it's a different that's a different lifestyle. For and sure. they, it's you feel it when they're they train with you, right? In, in my opinion, right? It's like you know, I'm I'm doing this for fun, and they're like, your ankle is what stands between me and making it to the United States, so you better tap. Right. <laughs> 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 I oh, like that. Man. I want that on a greeting card. That's a great saying. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, oh, but man. they have to go back to Brazil once a while. Like mm -hmm. they come with a visa of six months. So mm -hmm. something that uh, is kind of, they sleep on a mat like this because they don't have money, of course, to like, you know, get a house in Manhattan. You know, get a oh, one God. apartment my house, you probably spend like $5,000. Yeah. Yeah. But uh, that's why they sleep on a mat. But uh, once a while, they have to go back to Brazil, get another visa so they can come back to America. And sometimes, if they spend so much time in America, when they try to come back, not gonna let them in. They, they don't let them in. Mm. That's the problem. Then we start losing compares, good comparisons in America because that too. So it's a, like I said, to be on top of the apartment is not, is not an easy task to do. It's something really, really hard, especially. I wish you wouldn't wasn't like that but it is what it is mm -hmm. right yeah now recently we have we we had a few brazilians come in at the chicago open at soul fighters those three guys i unfortunately i wasn't able to train with with them but they were amazing everyone was saying how amazing those guys they were. did it really good in the walls one took a second place what would made to the semifinals uh they came to chicago open they both won yeah. a division so they are top fighters right now fighters. Uh, soul fighters right now is is a it's not a big academy. It's not a big association yet, like yeah. Alianza, Checkmate, and then, you know, all these big names. Yeah. But it's, we have a less fighters, but we have a good result. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? The percentage of the result of soft fighter have a, compared to big academies is huge. Yeah. So it's a new up academy, a new up, uh, new come on up uh, 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 association, so fighter, but it's, it's bringing a lot of good comparison right. to 
to the tournaments right now. Mm-hmm. Like Cicero Quas right now brought like so many like like you see the last result on on IBJJF, I don't mm-hmm. think I think it was a fed or, or with four yeah. four kids from Cicero Quas made to the find the world. Right. Mm-hmm. It was kinda of amazing I never saw something like all four of them on the podium from the same academy. This is is that's mm-hmm. how you yeah. know it's strong those academy become right now mm-hmm. like so far the Cicero Costa it's not just big names up there no more like they mm-hmm. now nowadays they have a challenge they have a, these new academies you know coming stronger them you know what I mean so right right that's a good start yeah that's fantastic yeah so Gabriel what's what's next for you what's the next tournament for you I think the word masters. That's it. That's yeah. August, end of August. And in the end of the August, August. Yeah. I I, I want to compete in Brazil one time. I will see when I come back to Brazil, but my goal is the world master next. Yeah. So, I'm gonna be a world master. You're gonna be a world master. Yes, you are. Are you? I'm good, thanks. Oh, yeah. <laughs> what about you, Zito? I don't know. We'll oh, how see. convenient that we've put we'll put you all on yeah, that side of the table. Yeah. The how weird is that? <laughs> <laughs> I might, I might, I can go and definitely watch go, go, for sure. Go and support. Go and support. Eat some acai. I'll do that for sure. <laughs> <laughs> Zito competed before. Yeah. Yeah. Yes. Oh, yeah, I did. I, I, yeah. I, I, it was fun. Why, I, I loved it. Yeah. I wonder why he's not competing again. That's, that's I just, a real I, I just, well, I don't know. I just feel like you know excuses. I like I I've this is. I had purple. I've already taken, you know, two months, four months of injuries, and I just, I want to just train. I want to train and get better and get better and better. And then I uh, get back in. I'm his professor. So I'll take it there. Yeah. There you go. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So, did you, guys, did you go watch the fights last night, the UFC in Chicago? Yes, it was an amazing fight. Amazing fight. The, the last one was very, very technical, very smart of uh, Sejudo. Yeah, Sejudo, yeah. Like, he read the, he read the first, first two rounds, and I think I think the strategy was beautiful. He changed his strategy on the middle of a storm. It was yeah. kind of crazy. He was like, have a distance. And, Enough for the other guy keep hitting him his legs, and yeah. then the second round for the third round they started like short the distance with no more kick, and they started yeah. hit blow knees on his body. So that was amazing fighting. Yeah, it was amazing. Incredible. Fighting. Yeah. Gabriel, you watch UFC a lot? Mm, not too much. Not too Sometimes. Much. <laughs> but you like <laughs> you, <laughs> you, you enjoy UFC though? Yes, I yeah. like. That's good. Yeah, that Valentina when she kicked. Jessica, I pretty much dead. Yeah, I thought I, I thought incredible. She yeah, yeah. Ooh, I, I think it was one of the scary, yeah. scary, scary moments in, in MMA. It was yeah. that that kick was right on a temple with like the sheen bone on the head. That was not not fun. Oh. <laughs> she was out for a while. Wow. Yeah, that was they like both. not even like the twitching kind no, of out. Just like just dead. Just just snap. Yeah, yeah. Just snap. yeah. yeah. The way she fell on, on the stage was open. Oh, yeah. Like yeah. She yeah. was complete out. Yeah. And they bought a chair. They bought a chair for her to sit down yeah. afterwards. Yeah. Like, that. this is something. <laughs> I learned about, uh, so it was, I watched the fights too with a, a friend who does Muay Thai. I didn't understand what was going on with Cerny's eye and he had to explain that to me. Oh. Did you guys know about this, the air thing? I guess there's something if you like blow your nose when you've yeah. been beat a bunch, you can like inflate your eye like a, like a, an ocular whoopee cushion. I think that's the technical term. <laughs> that, and he was trying to like, you know, technical. to like, uh, you know, deflate it. Yeah. And I, I was like, wait, what? Yeah. So yeah. I, I know that happens when you get your nose broken. Yeah. You can't, you, like, it's really, really tempting. You want to blow all that out. But yeah. if you do, it's going to swell up like crazy. Yeah. And I've seen that happen in the ring several times. I can't remember who the last person was that really messed that up. But yeah, Cerrone, Cerrone blew and, and sure enough, boom, swole up massively. So. <sighs> That's. Yeah. Pr- I had no idea that was a thing. Yeah. That's, yeah. Yeah. No. Yeah. I mean, I've heard it. I never seen anyone actually do it. <laughs> yeah. I'm proud to say I've never experienced it personally. So. Yeah. No. But that fight was amazing. Like Ferguson, that he didn't even look like he wasn't even breathing heavy. He wasn't. He was just like, yeah, uh, yeah. I just went, you know, with two two rounds, two full rounds, and he was not even like at all breathing heavy. He was just like talking normal. It's Great like, that guy has got cardio. That fight between him and between, um, hopefully in the future, uh, whoever wins between Poirier and or, uh, Khabib, Khabib, yeah. that's going to be a, a really, really interesting fight. Mm-hmm. How many times, like, knock on wood, not trying to jinx it, but how many times have we tried to get Ferguson 
and Khabib yeah. in the ring together. I think three or four. I, I'm, I'm pretty sure, yeah. And, yeah. It, and between weight cutting issues, I think on both sides, if, if I'm remembering. No, correctly. I don't think there's any weight cutting issues with no, Ferguson. No, could, are you sure? Yeah. Okay, maybe it was an injury then? Injury, yeah. This, okay. So Khabib yeah, was doing was, a photo shoot, right? Yeah, yeah, it was yeah, the, yeah, it was tripped the, over the, the tripped over the cord thing. Yeah. That, that where like that's still the craziest because that's the one that they he got injured, messed up his knee real bad, and they stripped him of the title. Right, yeah, <laughs> like that. That's I, I I still don't get that. But regardless, so yeah, maybe it was Khabib's missed weight twice for it. Right, wasn't gonna make the weight, and Tony got hurt once. So this so three times. Maybe yeah. this is the fourth attempt. Right. Maybe, maybe the, the fourth. hypothetical fourth. At this point, I think they're just going to double book it. They're just going to have like a back, like a rain date. They're like, <laughs> one of these two fights will happen. Right. So, yeah. yeah, they should do that for sure. Yeah. But, but yeah, yeah, I, I want to see that. I mean, I I that's, really want to see that fight. as a fan of both guys. Yeah, that's the fight. I mean, because the way Tony looked last night and his last fight with Pettis, it was uh, he looks good. I mean, he just he's just freaking beast. I mean, Gabriel, have you ever done any MMA? No, I never, never tried. Stand up's not easy for me. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I too dislike getting punched in the head. So, like, whenever yeah. I, whenever I train some MMA, I'm always like, oh, gotta do this for myself. Gotta, gotta prove that I can do this. But definitely don't want it as a career. Yeah, me and my friends at, my, at the gym I used to train at in Baltimore from Chicago came to like the same consensus. Where we were like, you know, we don't actually wants to like be punched we just kind of want to know how to punch just if we and how not to get punched yeah it's like we just want to be good at like muay thai without ever actually having to do it because that just looks like you'd get hit a lot oh yeah yeah in the face yeah i mean you don't want to get i mean i don't don't certainly yeah no it doesn't seem like fun but what about have you seen that combat worlds jiu-jitsu combat jiu-jitsu combat jiu-jitsu no i never you never seen it so eddie bravo from 10th planet uh has now his little like child project is creating this combat jujitsu where it's open palm strikes doing jujitsu. So it's slaps the head only when you're on the ground. So when you're standing up, no slaps, when you take the guy down, then it slaps and you can, you can palm strike to the side face mount Wagner uh, Rocha. He won uh, with just strikes from the mount. And yeah, that's like now brother shit. Yeah, that's that's yeah, serious yeah. stuff. Yeah, right, big brother stuff. Yeah. Why, why are you hitting yourself? Why? Right. So offensive. So. What do you think about that? What do you got? Now you. So <laughs> you. you get really like old heart. People old start yeah. with no offense. Right. But, yeah. <laughs> you know, like, oh, right. this could be good. All right, the podcast Ima- is started. Imagine Let's go. Imagine you fight somebody. And you say to the boy, say, please, don't, you can't punch my face, but don't slap me. Don't slap me. I like to Just get like, it's like punching the nose, then like he's slap on the face. It's right. so humiliating. Like, yeah. don't slap on the face. Don't, don't do that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, if someone slaps you in a street fight, you're just, they're just disrespecting you at that yeah, point, right? Exactly. They don't even consider so, you an opponent. Right. I've I absolutely know. seen people get knocked out from, from open hand strikes, though. Oof. I mean, like that. Like, there's boss, still a lot. boss Rutten is like. Well, not even, not even like good palm strikes. Like like, you go to World Star, you're gonna for sure. Oh, find, yeah. okay. gonna, I'm yeah. sure someone find, finally said World Star because that's what I've been thinking this whole time. Whole time yeah, yeah, as yeah. we discuss it, yeah. yeah. Hey, listen, it'll be like a bunch of dudes with like no no ears no more. They won't be <laughs> a big slap and they can get you like oh yeah, yeah. right there. Deflate you know your cauliflower. I mean? Oh. Well, no, yeah. It can get you like <laughs> death. Like you can yeah. won't yeah. be able yeah, to yeah, hear it anymore. It'll bust your eardrum. Yeah, I don't think. But they're not taping their hands up, right? The combat, they're not. No, they're, no, there's no it's, tape. Yeah, it's, it's just it's bare hand. Just bare hand, just slap. Right. I don't and, know. You, and we're talking about slapping the face, but I mean, like they can, and sometimes it looks really silly. But they can slap anywhere on the body. Can they? Yeah. Can they chalk up? Get that good grip? I haven't yeah. seen yeah. that, but that'd be amazing. <laughs> Think about the first time you hit a guy with a handful of chalk. <laughs> it looked like a kung fu movie. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. It's 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 interesting because I mean his whole idea of of not doing MMA, right? His his a ten planet system is stems from like the whole uh, defense for MMA, like the rubber guard and all that fun stuff is supposed to be good from from the back, so you can kind of like what what well, off your well, back. Off yeah, your that, back, right. But that's that, that's going to depend on, like, what era of Eddie Bravo we're focused on. Because, right. like, like, focus has changed. You know, times have changed. It, it, like, at the core, the, the the idea is he wants to develop techniques that are effective for no gi because he believes it will translate over easiest to MMA. Mm-hmm. 
Mm-hmm. And yes, so right. certain techniques absolutely have to pass through that filter of the, the Bravo filter, I guess, <laughs> uh, of whether or not like, hey, can a guy beat the crap out of you while you're trying to do this? Right. And then, you know, if – if the answer to that is yes, you know, let's put it over here in this pile where we're only going to try that in sport jujitsu. And if the answer is no, then, you know, that's obviously good for general jujitsu MMA training. And one of the reasons that like Eddie wanted to change from doing um, EBI to doing the combat jujitsu format was there's certain strategies that were becoming very, very dominant in EBI. Well, I watched the recent qualifier the recent, yeah the, and he says his whole he, he wanted to do combat before ebi no no he's he had combat before he had ebi like but they wouldn't let him so he right, had to do right. he, he had to run with the ebi who, first who's right. they? commissions i guess yeah so they so sanction. running a combat jiu-jitsu tournament is a lot more complicated because it gets into that like sphere of where we're oh we're we're hitting each other now now we need different yeah, we, we, we need different safety requirements, different – we have to go through different commissions and whatnot hmm. because it falls under that MMA boxing right. type thing. Do, um, you, do you know where he came up with this idea? Because back in the day, uh, Carson Gray's team, they I was used gonna, I was going to talk about that actually. <laughs> Yeah. So go ahead. No, no. Go no ahead. I, I want to. I want to hear your perspective because you actually been through yeah, it. Yeah, yeah. Back in the day, they use they use this type of train, this combat jujitsu. They use that type of train in Brazil, so the fighter didn't was would be um, wouldn't get hurt before the fight. So they usually like train like that with the open hand, imitate somebody with a closed face, punch you in the face. Taparia. Taparia. They call taparia <laughs> back in the day. So that's all my question for you. How did Eddie Bravo come up with this, this, type, this mean, type of sport like combat jiu-jitsu? Because this was a train back in the day. Probably. For the MMA fighters from Carson Grace, you know, get ready for their fight. If right. now get so many injuries, especially like... Open eyes, right. broken nose, you know what I mean? Those concussions, those, right? Yeah. yeah, those things can like actually take you out of fight, you know mm-hmm. what I mean? If you do that like a two weeks and get a like open eye, you won't be able to fight, and then it's a big deal like promotion, money involved, mm-hmm. advertising, stuff like that. So that's why they use taparia back in the day to do that. So oh, now wow. it's become a sport. Like, and now it's nice. become its own sport. I mean, I'm sure, I'm sure he's taken. You know, I mean, Eddie Bravo's definitely not no fool. I mean, he looks in the past and he's fully in. I mean, he's been in jujitsu. He's a third degree black belt also. Yeah. So he's been doing jujitsu since the mid nineties. Mm-hmm. You know, uh, is it when he started. So I'm sure he was around back then, and you know, said that was something that maybe he brought back. I think he came up with combat maybe or started maybe about five years ago. Well, was okay, thinking so, about it. So they had combat jujitsu matches and i know this because compella was like the the first guy to to win a combat okay. jujitsu tournament or or super fight or whatever and they were attaching them initially to like mma shows if i remember correctly okay but um but yeah like it, it didn't it, it couldn't get momentum wouldn't go anywhere and he's having trouble you know with commissions and right, things right, like right. that so um came up with the ebi concept obviously that was a lot easier i guess to to sell as as something to do and then once he became like a known name you know because you got to remember ebi came in the in the wake of metamorris he was trying to develop his own professional jujitsu thing metamorris actually came before that um so yeah like like once he's already got an established name and people know that they can trust him and whatnot Mm. and probably has some better connections through ufc and fight pass and all that that stuff integrated because uh, right now EBI is on a back burner. That's what he said in his yeah, last pretty thing. much, pretty he's much. Like, he'll bring it back maybe in the future. A lot of guys uh, miss that format. Well, I, I mean, I think that format is um, it started seeing some problems, obviously, right. but um, and and like a part of that, like you said, a part of the the transition to combat jujitsu. Getting back to that is but that, combat jujitsu still has overtime rules. Yeah, it still has over. It has yeah, yeah. it has some slightly different rules and whatnot above yeah. and beyond just the strikes, but. The strikes help ag- address certain things that you can get away with yeah. in a submission-only format where there's no points being scored. Okay, like you can let a guy mount you with almost without penalty right. if you've got good defense, and if he's not scoring points for doing it, you're actually burning a lot of time. Mm. Okay, but suddenly we add the striking element, and that's a damn suicidal strategy. Suddenly, right. Okay, as it you know, as it should be, but without you know, you can't have a submission only format 
with no points being scored, no advantages, no, no, no way of determining who wins or loses based on the actions in regulation time. Okay, you, you, you can't have that be submission only. Okay. Well, you can, but it's going to look real silly. Well, that's what I'm saying. Yeah, like, right. like, so, so the, the, the way we get around that is we're going to add the open hand strikes to it. Mm. So now, yeah. now we're not going to have, well, maybe we'll develop different silly strategies around the rules. That's always going to happen maybe. eventually, right? Mm -hmm. but, uh, but yeah, so that, that was like, that was how we solve that problem. Mm -hmm. Nice. So, so speaking of metamorphs, have, have you ever done, uh, Gabriel, any like a, or do they even have as many of the, these kind of like jujitsu shows kind of like, like super fight to fights win? Yeah, super fights, Polaris. Like, do they do, like, have you ever done any of those? And do they have as many of them in Brazil or any in Brazil? No, I haven't done, uh, I never, uh, I never compete in the different holes, uh, just in the AIBJJF. Uh, CBJJ? Yeah. Yeah. So always, always uh, tournaments. No, then. sorry. Uh, and I did some, uh, I, I went to the Abu Dhabi two yeah. times. Yeah. I, I, okay. One time I won the qualifying Brazil. It was harder than, than, <laughs> than the, where I, when I compete in, in Abu Dhabi, you know. And I, 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 I went to Abu Dhabi two times. It's different time, but... And similar ru rules, huh? uh -huh. right. different division, but similar rules than IBJJF. Huh? So what do you think now? What do you think? How do you, because you've been doing jiu-jitsu a very long time, how is the game for you? How have you, how have you, how do you see the game now? Do you see, do you like where it's going? Do you like all these tournaments? Do you enjoy watching it and you enjoy seeing the young kids, what they're doing and how they're doing everything? Yeah, it's, it's. Nice to say about this. I have a lot of friends. They don't trust on, on a, a new jujitsu. Uh? <laughs> uh -huh. uh, but in my opinion, you have to know everything, uh, old and new jujitsu. Uh, but w when I think about a real fight, the jujitsu uh, is, is not it's not the same strong than. When I was young, you know, about a real fight, fight, you know, for MMA fight, you know, if I compare what I learned when I was young, it's better than what I'm learning now about a real fight, you know. It's this is my opinion. Like, what, uh, what would you learn? Yeah. Yeah. F why? Because they they don't train too much take down. They don't train too much how, uh, uh, top game. You know, they they trust on guard all the time. If you jump at the guard in the real fight, you, you're going to lose. Uh, yeah. Understand my point? <laughs> they yeah. are smart because they they play the, play in my the opinion, the easiest, the easiest part of the fight. For example, they don't train too much how to take it down. They don't train too much how to open the guard. This is the hardest part of the, the fight, you know. But... They they are so good and and defend the guard and sweeps you know this is for sport it's okay for a real fight they walk for the wrong way you know yeah, yeah, yeah. this is my opinion you know? yeah. but I trust in everything you have to 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 learn everything the old jiu jitsu and the new jiu jitsu I'm I have an open mind and if I don't learn how to to block the beating bull, I cannot compete anymore, you know? Right, right. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> but for a real fight, I trust, you know, old jiu-jitsu, you know? Right, right, right. Street, yeah. right. Did it, so in Brazil, in Rio, I mean, you grew up then with, I mean, basically, you know, like all, I mean, Hicks and all those guys were in, in around your area, right? Yes. So is, did you jump around and did you were able to train with yeah. those? Yeah, the, the the richest thing I have, I, I I can go in many different flags. You know, I have a lot of friends there, uh, and I I'm the richest thing I have. I can I can spar with everybody. You know, this is this is nice. Yeah, yeah. You know, um, I uh, the time Marcel Alonso moved to Seattle, uh, he he was my my teacher when he was in Brazil. It was in 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 2000. I I keep train, I keep teach, and I 
keep compete and i i'm always open to learn something new you know by myself you know i don't have i don't have master uh, after this you know i i but I still compete and and go around. <laughs> so well, is that why you have no stripes on your? I mean, you're like a fifth degree black belt now. Now I have yeah more more five yeah, five five degrees now. But you have, but you just walk around with a black belt. Yeah, do you know why? Because uh, stripes stripes for me, it's like a it's it's nothing you know, but for all the colors it's okay. Stripes for me, I just give for I know who is, um, who has more time, you yeah. know. But when I when I when I get my black belt, I I don't like the system, you know, because think about I train every single day, I compete a lot, I as as much I can, and as the other guy just sit and do. Uh, a different stuff and past three years he gets a stripe he right. get the stripe the same to me and this is nothing for me you know mm -hmm. you cannot uh, separate for stripes who right who train six times a a, a a week and one guy never train you know right, this is right. for me this is nothing I when I go around many um, uh, many times Someone asked me, hey, how many stripes do you have? <laughs> and I don't know. <laughs> it's this is nothing for me. I just want to keep training and keep learning. I'm right. That's it. <laughs> that's it. That's awesome. I mean I that's, I appreciate that. Yeah, mm -hmm. for sure. That's fucking and fantastic. Just, just you know, for those listeners who may not know, you know, the the way the way stripes work for the colored belts is, is different for how they work for black belt. So like colored belts, stripes are awarded based on, you know, whatever your instructor feels is appropriate. Every instructor has different criteria. Some, some make you to show you that you're, you're, yeah, to, you're progressing to show progress towards the, the, next, the belt. next belt. And once you, once you have the adequate number of stripes, you're, you're bumped up to the next belt. Well, it, only Sometimes. Goes, it, only, it only goes to four. Well, yeah, well, I, I've seen some people who, who probably should have like about 20 stripes on that, on that white belt, but you know, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So after after four, and then after, you, you would normally the next one would be a bump. That's up an, in, yeah. That's in a, that's an indication color. you're you should be ready for your next belt. Right. Hey, and can I try to say something Absolutely. worse about stripes? <laughs> Please. <laughs> yes. All right. Now we're we love it. getting love into it. the second hour here. Yeah. yeah. I competed the first national in, in IBJJF. Huh? I was blue belt. Every every year I still compete more than twenty. I compete something like more than twenty years in my life, you know, in IBJJF. And but the my 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 teachers Murilo Bustamante, Amaury Bitete, Marcelo Alonso, the the confederation gave to them uh, his his stripes. Huh? But I don't I, I don't have stripes in IBJJF. This is weird because uh, I have to pay a lot of money for have a certificate of yeah. I am a black belt uh, uh, the the IBJJF uh, certification certification. Yes. But uh, they uh, just for you understand. I have to pay uh, uh, maybe a two a two thousand reais for have my certification and my degrees in IBJJF. Uh, this is I don't want to pay this because I compete every single day, every 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 year. You know mm -hmm. how you I I cannot have my certification. I cannot have my stripes. If I compete every every world championship, every national comp every year I compete, how I cannot have my stripes and my certificates of black belt? I can understand the sports grow. I, I can understand who never compete have to pay for certification, right. but, but they know you, I don't want to pay, it, you know, right. I don't want to yeah. pay. This, 2000 has you know? it's like 500 bucks. So right. it's like, you know, like four tournaments if right. you sign up late. Right, right, That's right, the only way I've yeah. ever signed it's, up for a tournament. Yeah. But I hear you can do it <laughs> earlier. I hear you can do it earlier. Yeah. Yeah. For my student, I can give all the belts, but 
when when I give the the black, I have to I need to have someone for for over me for sign for the yeah for the IBJJF. Understand? I'm already that to do this for me for my black belts, you know? Yeah. Because I'm not I don't have a certificate. <laughs> right, of, right, uh, right. Fascinating. This, I yeah. don't want to pay this. <laughs> no, no. Yeah. But, uh, uh, <clears throat> but uh, it's like any other sport. We have a federation. If you have a, if you don't have a federation, it's hard. It's hard to make any any sport grow. So sometimes what they not sometimes they charge you because to make this whole process like track your championships and know in, in when you're supposed to get your stripes. Somebody have to work and do this for you. So that's why they ask the money so you can pay for certificate. You know, you have to buy the paper, you have to print the paper, you have to, to ask somebody to track your championship to know how many, ch you know, term that you compete. Like, like right now, I'm going to Vegas to compete the world, right? They send my certificate for me, but I have to pay too. I was going to say that they send for free, but they don't. I work for them. I work as a referee, so they give my black belt certificate because I work for them. If it wasn't for that, I had to pay like any other black belt on the league. And it's four hundred dollars in America, five hundred dollars to get a, a black belt certificate. And if you want the stripes a little bit more money, they don't keep asking you for four hundred dollars every year or every three years to get a new certificate. They're just gonna like kind of yeah. Uh, renew mm -hmm. your 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 like belts you said, and your we're, stripes. We're, the forty dollars you still pay the forty dollars like everyone else. Does. I did this for membership. Yeah, membership. That's just, just to different. be member yeah. right. of IBJJF. We talk right. about like like certificate, like uh, as a black belt. You yeah. need to like o only black belt does a certificate for IBJJF. As far as I know, is yes. Yeah, no, there's no blue or purple or brown belt certificates that the IBJJF well, gives right. you. But but. The, the the reason for the black belt and correct me if I'm wrong, the reason for the black belt certificate is also because you need a black belt to sign off. So like you have to be a certified black belt with the IBJJF so you can say this guy competes under me and I certify him as, you know, as a brown belt, as a blue belt, as a purple belt, whatever it may be. Right? This, well, so this so is that, cool. that's the purpose of the certificate that, it, the, it, that the, you're a registered black belt. The purpose of like a federation is go beyond beyond like a lot of lot of thinking. Uh, I've been doing jiu-jitsu like almost the same time as BL, like 30 years, I'm 25 years doing jiu-jitsu. And uh, to make this whole thing work, we need to keep in track of black belts, how many students they, they make as a black belt, how many mm -hmm. students they promote as a black belt. Mm -hmm. If you don't have a, um, a history of those people, Everybody's gonna start become black belt like out of nowhere. Yeah. To to give a black belt to a student, you need to have a, at least two strappers in your black belt. Do you know that? Yeah, you you cannot one. give your black belt to another to a brown belt if you just got your black belt yesterday. Right. right. You need to become a second degree black belt to do your first black belt mm -hmm. uh, promotion. Right. Right. So. How we going How they gonna make this happen? They, they need. They need to keep you on the books, on the record, mm. so they know. So how they do that? Send you the certificate. Mm. You know what I mean? So now, if one of my guys, you become my black belt one day zero, you have to file with IBJJF right. that you got your black belt, so you can start count the time that you've been a black belt, so it can promote your students in the future. Mm -hmm. So that's why they ask you to pay because somebody's doing that for you there. It's not nothing's free in America. No, right. It's nothing free anywhere. Right. So you have to pay. But in Brazil, because the people they don't have much money, they don't want to pay for a simple piece of paper. Right. They and their mentality is just a piece of paper, but it's not. They track a lot of stuff from you. Like I said, I'm going to do walls right now and try to become a world. Uh, take my award for the first place in the ranking. I'm already the first on the rank, but I want to keep up the points so I can get the, the first reward they're going to, you know, give to the black belts now, the master black belts. I'm going to try to get this, you know, right, ring, right. whatever they, they, they're going to give it to us on the 22nd. You know what I mean? For, in order to do that, they need to keep tracking my my points, my right. tournaments, right. my everything. 
So I think it's the is the right thing. Like charge is not the right thing, but it, it's fair. You know, somebody mm-hmm. working for us to make this better. Right. You know what I mean, that's why sometimes then I'm, when I say go beyond and never, beyond like a lot of stuff is why so many rules for the same sport. Yeah. Why ABI uh, combine sport? Uh, a ref cannot have like so many ideas of of rules. Right. Otherwise, they're never gonna do a good job. Right. Uh, today is only submission. Okay, I don't have to ref today. No points today. Okay. Uh, today is IBJJF rules. Okay. Uh, today is IB, IBI rules. It's very hard for anybody to get better in refing. Mm-hmm. And hey. the sport goes like, what sport are we doing here? Right. right. It's. It, I mean, it's it's pretty rough for the competitors and the and the yeah. coaches sometimes too. Yeah, the Actually, competitors too. Right. They got to figure out. Hey, can, is it allowed? Can I can I reap here? Can I foot lock here? I don't know. Oh, you can't do that. Right. Exactly. I, yeah. I've actually got like. This has only really not occurred to me, but it's like only really been like something I realize is of an issue. Um, so uh, I, I, you know, I, I coach pretty often now. Uh, or let me let me correct that. I teach pretty often now. I, I try to get out of coaching as much as possible because I'm still an awful coach. Where do you teach, Javi? Everywhere. Okay, just a, a, anywhere that'll have me. I've been there before. I never <laughs> noticed you coaching there. Like, I, was, you know, I was off on the sidelines. Okay. No, uh, at at Tenth Planet, at uh, at the LCCT locations, okay. uh, at at Team Redsvik and Deerfield. Um, so yeah, like these are places I all teach at. Not everyone obviously competes. I am frequently amazed that guys that have the intention of compete but haven't yet don't understand that there are a different rule sets. Obviously, okay. It's obvious to us that they have competed and whatnot, and obviously the fans, but not always obvious to the guys that are that are coming up. Uh, and B, and this, I, like, I don't know why I didn't realize this would be a problem for some people. Those rules change sometimes on the same day, immediately after each other, whether you're doing gi or no gi. Yeah. Now, this is not a problem, obviously, in the IBJJF, because even though I didn't always think of it this way, I've come to realize. Just how beneficial that is that the only rules different between no gi and gi jiu jitsu in the IBJJF is actually whether or not you're allowed to grab the other guy's clothing. Like, That's like, it, yeah, yeah it, it's just gripping rules basically between gi and no gi. But when you go and you do, I'm not putting anyone on blast, but when you go and do Fuji, when you go and do Naga, certain other tournament formats, the, the you are going to be competing frequently. In the gi and the no gi division on the same day, sometimes minutes apart, right. and the rules are wildly different for what is a legal technique in one versus what is a legal technique in other. In Naga, um, in Fuji, other form. Again, I'm not trying to put anyone in blast, right, right, right. but it's like literally you could go, okay, um, I'm not allowed to reap over here because it's an instant disqualification because we're we're basing our rule set in the gi on IBJJF, but over here it's no gi. Reaping is allowed. We can do heel hooks. Right. And it's like... You need two different game plans. Right, right. And for right. beginners, they barely have one in their right. mind. Right. And I can totally flip that switch on a dime. Like right. I, 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 I've come in an experienced competitor. Right. Man. <laughs> I didn't realize how hard that is for, They're for guys the that are one new. takedown they know anyway. Yeah, exactly. Right? So. Exactly. Everything's training. Right. Everything's right. technique. It's nothing made like... Uh, is going to happen now. It's technique. If you train yourself to do two tournaments a day and different rules, you'll be good at two. You know right. what I mean? If you do IBJJF forever, it'll be easy for you to do it. Anything that you train your mind, your body, right. you can't do it. But right now, like he said, it's just too many. This week, I'm going to compete IBJJF. The next follow, the, the next follow week, I'm going to be competing Fuji. Oh, wait a minute. Right. Can I do the same thing that I do on IBJJF and the Fuji and the very next day of Fuji? Okay, compete gi, gi, and no gi. Oh, my goodness. Right. right. Three sets of rules like in, in less than 10 days. <laughs> yeah, it's a lot It's a lot it's to a lot. keep track of. It's a lot. It's a lot to keep track of. <laughs> but, uh, yeah, so so Ed, 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 as an instructor, I've I've had to make sure now that, that I've changed the way that I, I teach certain things. Mm-hmm. Whereas before I'd be like, yeah, this is legal here. It's not legal there. And I thought that was enough of it. No, I, I've realized I really have to like help them develop a strategy based around 
what that rule set is and make sure that they understand it the whole, the it whole see, lead it seems up like, to it. It seems like a lot, a lot of extra work. It's just like, you know what, guys? Go on YouTube. Go look at the rule set. Just, <laughs> I'm done. I, I don't can't. trust. I don't I'm trust my competitors to do the homework that YouTube, I give them. Go, do, go if you're competing. Go on YouTube. Go look at that. Okay, I'm going to show you some jujitsu. Okay, go, go, please. That's hey, it. And it's funny when the referee coordinated. Hey, have you read the set? The rule set. But they, wait a minute for what type of tournament you're talking about right. you know yeah. what I mean I can always tell when we're when we're in the rules meeting you can always tell like the guy who has actually read the rule set because he has those really super detailed questions he's like you know uh, page four, paragraph 17, uh, subsection A, they call out that this particular version of the technique may not be legal. Can I get a demonstration of what way I can execute this technique? Like, okay. Is this, is this a friend of yours? Someone you know? <laughs> this, is him, actually. this is occasionally me, actually. <laughs> actually. <Yeah. laughs> My biggest pet peeve is when, like, the very small stirrup tournaments have their own, like, unique twist on the rules that's, yeah. like... Like it's like different from everything else, and also like not fully thought out. They're just like, oh, this is the way it should be, right? And you right. go to the rules meeting, and you're just like, wait, I. But what? Like, like you're saying, like, what about this? What about that? Right. Like, I've heard. And like, they they clearly have no answer to you. Uh, yeah, I mean, yeah. like, and and that's I get frustrated because I've I've been to tournaments where they're like, oh, well, you know, you can you can grab the pants in in nogi if you comp if you choose to compete in pants, right? They, in nogi, then you can grab the pants, yes. and I was like. And, but the reasoning, they're like, well, because, like, it's just too hard to keep track of. And, like, of course, being a troll, I raised my hand. I was like, well, what if we had someone that we could nominate who could, like, be there, who maybe, like, their only job was to make sure that, like, you, you weren't doing hands. things, like, grabbing, like, some type of, I don't know, like, a referee or an right. official. Could we, could, we, could we do that? <laughs> Let's give him a name. I just, like, yeah, just, yeah. yeah. Right. No, well, um, I mean, even, even, but look at, like, the, the, the biggest MMA, like, UFC. Mm -hmm. Like, they're, they're governed by commissions mm -hmm. that support different rule sets based on the state the region you're in yeah, the region yeah you're in. So, that's crazy so last night they're like oh uh the illinois athletic commission adopted the new rule set whereas which is the, not new by the way the, right. the, the new rule set is actually a couple of years old oh, that's right. what they're calling the that's, new rule that's set? what they're calling yeah, the new one yeah. right right yeah, unless, the, the sorry, new, sorry. unified unless rules there's been whatever a, it's called another change to it that i'm not aware of i'm not but aware the, yeah the most recent update of the unified rules of mma is Gosh, it might already be three years old. I think it's only Maybe. two, but I don't know. I'm not positive. I'd have to look that up. But yeah, not every commission adopts it at the same time. Right. So like if you're fighting in Vegas, you fight under different rules than if right. you're fighting in New York, I think. Yeah. Yeah. And Chicago, I think as well. So yeah. there, it's just, so even the, even a billion dollar corporation like the UFC they're still surrounded by right. but politics that is th like that uh, is a slight i mean that that's we doing? because it's it's controlled by something that's outside of their organization All right exactly yeah you yeah, know that, but that, again no we don't ha we're, we have the we have the everyone everyone can agree that IBJJF is the biggest governing uh, federation Right, right. Like by yeah. num by numbers, and by everything? numbers, yeah. and by, by, by any measure, right? I, I by any think, measure, right? Yeah. For yeah, jujitsu, I, I don't think anyone comes close right. at this point. And then you have all these little like Naga comes up, and then New Breed, and whomever grabbing games. For a long, long time, I right. don't think any other on a, on a, other um, company will come up with a better idea of like the rules of jujitsu. Yeah. But that's I not going to stop people from trying. Yeah. But people keep trying, right? Yeah. Yeah. Exactly. You, you can make yeah. enough money doing it. So right. Well, here here's the thing. So I mean, obviously, not everyone likes. IBJJF rules like that. That's oh, I thought it was reaching for a donut. Uh, not everyone's going to like the same rule set. Mm -hmm. A lot of guys are going to be like, I can do this better. I have a, I have the idea that will make this better, whatever it may be. Mm -hmm. um, I think that's cool and all. And you know, the market's going to determine I think, whether I think that actually good. works. I think though. that's good. I think that creating your own rule set is fine, but have it in a tournament where it's like a Polaris. Or combat, where it's just a sixteen man bracket. Those sixteen men, no, I can't. I don't. I just think that if you're doing like a a grappling games or grappling industries and these big, where they're having like hundreds of competitors coming in, why don't we just adopt the same type of rule set and just say I'm defending one set of rules, two set of rules, only submission or IBJJF rules. Right, exactly. Right. Two sets of like, two, keep it keep, keep it simple. Keep it simple. We'll make everybody better. We have a better referees. We have a better tournament, right. you know, to go and take your students. And you don't have to, like, explain, like, to your students, hey, we, we're doing jiu-jitsu today, nowadays. So when somebody comes at your door, hey, I want to learn jiu-jitsu today, professor. Okay, come over here. Let me, let me introduce you uh, to uh, free trial classes. 
Ah, ok. So, what is jiu-jitsu about it? Uh, we have a different sets of jiu-jitsu. We can do jiu-jitsu for no gi, self-defense, uh, disarm people, to do anything in jiu-jitsu. Mm -hmm. It's not the people looking for. Right. When you go like to a martial art, I'm going to do karate. They know what I'm talking about. Right. We can be Olympic sport. You know what I mean? You can go just to learn to defend yourself. One set of rules is not too many things. Right. Like when you go to judo, you don't have like so many, you know, different sports for judo. Judo is judo. Why do Jesus have to be jiu-jitsu and jiu-jitsu blah, 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 blah. <laughs> you know, that's what I'm talking right. about. We there's need a combat more. judo, right? It's okay. weird, but I've seen it. <laughs> well, okay, so. Make sports serious right. a little bit more. So judo has one massive overarching federation which the, is a non-for-profit correct yeah yeah the, yeah. the ijf that's okay. an important distinction it, it is it is but so <laughs> which which ties into the olympics mind you that right like, that's that's part of the thing but um so yeah so the ijf is like the overarching world body based in japan and whatnot uh and then of course the, they're the ones that deal with the the ioc uh, the, the olympic committees and whatnot um there are other like in America, we have two major different judo federations that both have ties to the IJF. There's a, a – and there used to be more actually. And then there's also splinter organizations that don't necessarily follow the IJF rules because the IJF is all about modern Olympic style. Mm -hmm. Okay, And – a couple of years ago, like when I started judo, let alone when, you know, like 20, 30 years ago, the rules were very, very different. You could and still course, touch a leg. You could still touch a leg without getting disqualified. <laughs> yeah. um, exactly. and, of, and of course, a lot of people, especially, I don't know, every, every time they change the rules, somebody's going to complain. Don't get me wrong. Mm -hmm. But um, like some of the major changes have really significantly impacted the way that people practice judo when they want to compete at a high level, but that subsequently translates into how people end up teaching judo. So there's a lot of disagreement about, um, like, are we losing some of our art because, well, the IJF decided we're going to ban leg touches. That's mm. the most iconic example, okay? Um, something a lot of jiu-jitsu practitioners don't, uh, don't necessarily know, uh, but judo used to have a lot more focus on mat work, yeah. okay? So, so like... You can find old back videos on YouTube. Yeah, it's yeah, pretty, yeah. Back in the day, yeah, yes. you'd see guys that were really, really expert at it. And if you talk to the Japanese, they feel like, you know, like kind of like, thank God for jujitsu because they had translated over a lot of their, a lot of their academies and whatnot, had followed the IJF guidelines, focused even more on stand up, and, and like, were it not for jujitsu, many of the elements that used to be in judo with that heavy newaza we call it, that the heavy mm -hmm. groundwork would have kind of been lost to them. So uh, like you, you talk to Jesus older back. yeah yeah you talk to older judo practitioners and they're like you know jiu jitsu helps make us whole again sort of yeah. attitude. So yeah like th that's the, that's kind of the downside of having that that one big monolithic organization is everything's cool when they're doing stuff that you agree with but when they do something you don't like you know, oh, now there's problems mm -hmm. because right. it has all that support and momentum mm -hmm. behind it. So, like, if you liked leg touch being legal in judo, for example, and suddenly the largest governing body in the world says, eh, we're not doing that anymore. Well, now you have a choice to make. Do you want to go, okay, well, well, we're going to support what they do because they have their reasons and we're, we're going to just agree with it. And now we're, we're not going to focus too much on that because it'll get our, our competitors banned. Mm -hmm. Okay. Or do you go, well... I think this is really important. It's how I learned. It's what I'm good at, whatever it may be. I'm going to keep teaching this, practicing it. And now it's like, okay, if I want to compete, now we need an alternate rule set. I mean, this is like what, what Gabriel was saying. And this is something I've noticed recently too, is like, you know, the current white belts, they learn a lot more sport focused stuff. And mm -hmm. like when, I mean, I've been doing jujitsu for like nine years now, which is, which is not that long when you're sitting next to two, right, right, two right. Brazilians. Nor okay, normally you would yeah. say that with greater confidence. Yeah, like, exactly. hey, man, I've been doing jiu-jitsu for nine, nine years. years. Almost yeah, a decade of jiu-jitsu. Yeah, right, right. And then you're like, just a just, just nine years. Not even a decade But yet. like you know, when we started, it was very – what like people who have been doing it started training in the States as, as I did and doing about as long as I have. It was very kind of um, you know, half guard, closed guard, arm bar, like – 
bread and butter stuff, which like, and that's not bad at all, but it's very kind of like step by step. And you kind of like, it's almost a little bit like kata, right? And then okay. I, I feel like when I roll with like modern white belts now, it's like they're going right into like very fast leg drags, very fast, like Toriano passes. Like they learn that like very sport effective stuff, like really, you know, like really, really immediately. And I think that might be kind of like a, a, a slower scale version of like what we were talking about, like of things becoming like you were saying, Gabriel, like it's less self-defense oriented. It's more like sport oriented. And, you know, I, I mean, we've, we've straight up made jokes about it that the only place you see, and obviously they're just jokes. People don't, don't get bent out of shape, but like, if you want to see close phone number is, yeah, yeah. <laughs> don't you dare. <laughs> but, uh, if you want to see close guard, mm -hmm. you go to master's world. Because <laughs> because nobody plays close guard outside yeah. of Master's World is the is is the joke obviously, yeah. mm -hmm. um, not true. But there there's that element yeah. of truth to it that you you tend to see certain strategies more. At, obviously, a certain weight classes is different. Mm -hmm. I, I don't see ultra heavyweights doing a lot of uh, reverse Delahiva, Kiss of the Dragon, Delahiva Barambola type game that much. But um, but yeah, like, like everyone's got their 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 weight class and sports specific strategies. Um, and then everyone's got their idea of what, what is the fundamentals. Yeah. And, uh, I think you would be laughed at if 12 years ago you were like, yeah, no leg drags, barren bolos, white belt technique. That's my fundamental curriculum. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and, uh, now that's clearly not the case because yeah. you, you need to know that stuff if you're a competitor. Yeah. yeah. What do you teach your, so at your school, Gabriel, like what do you, you were talking about how things have changed and you, you, you like the modern stuff, but you respect the old stuff. So what do you teach? What do you teach your students at white belt? I, I, I try to to teach as uh, at most old uh, jiu-jitsu, but I I teach um, uh, bending bolos and fifty fifty and everything you know. I I think for the the base I trust on uh, old jiu-jitsu, but if you uh, we you have to know everything you have to know uh, new jiu jitsu i don't know i have to know everything <laughs> <laughs> do you teach wrestling techniques judo techniques too not too much for 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 for, for beginnings you know uh, in, for who like a blue belt and a blue, blue, purple, and brown. I I teach more stand up and yeah. uh, more, more. I don't know more than jiu jitsu too. You know, I I always teach more on the. Uh, my basic is on the ground. You have to learn how to. In my opinion, first thing you have to learn is stay on the top. Most of the time, it's easier way to to win. Uh, the fights for beginning. It is my my goal. I train more. Uh, for example, I teach more how to to survive on the bar, how to close the guard, how to stand up, a technical stand up. This is the basic for my beginners. You know, mm. when you get a blue belt, I start teach more uh, different steps. For example, takedowns and and modern jiu jitsu. Too, you know, mm -hmm. this is my my style. <laughs> the, reason, the reason that you do that is because uh, it's safe for the white belts to learn? Perfect, yes. Okay. Uh, so they don't get hurt by doing standing up. Yeah. And they can, you know, have a longer life. I never the start in stand up. I always start on the ground, you know. And many, th uh, if you are beginning, most of the time, I, I the first spar, you're going to spar with some advanced guys. And I put my beginning over me, you know? And uh, the first thing I, I like to teach is don't fall. Don't give the close guard. Stay on the top and try to pass the guard. This is the, the easiest way, in my opinion, you know? Mm -hmm. it's, it's nice you seeing that because we have very, very similar, you know, ways to train uh, the beginners. And, um, I taught that to Zito when he first arrived to my academy, and everybody else behind after him, we do the same thing. We don't do a lot of stand up, so we can keep our our beginners on a safe place, so they can Perfect. be 
on the match more often. If you have a white belt and come and get hurt in the first week, I mean, we lose opportunity to, you know, get a good or talent, you know, student on the mat just because we don't prevent injuries like that. So that's mm -hmm. what's good. In, in my gym, most of the injury is when I have stand up. And I always say to my student, uh, better we start on the ground first. When you know, we start do a top uh, stand up game, you know, just for protect to, for protect herself. For protection, yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah, that's that's important. It's and in the day, you know, I mean, everyone, no one wants to get injured, right? Yeah. So, the people with the most um, experience know better than the people with the least amount of experience. You know, yes. I know we get a lot of new students who come in and they, you know, they're always saying, oh, you know, let's kind of want, this is MMA, I want, and, and you just, you got to kind of save them from themselves I and say, listen, this is what we, this is what we, this is how we do it. And there's a reason for it, you know. Yes. Uh, for me, it's everything, is strategy and, and, and technique mm -hmm. involved. Mm -hmm. Like 90% in numbers, you know what I mean, stuff like I work with numbers a lot. 90% of people go to academy, every academy, they're not competitors. Mm. No, yeah. right, right. They want to learn jiu jitsu. Mm -hmm. They want to learn the mind. They want to be involved in the lifestyle of jiu jitsu. They want to like learn something different. Like, like I said, is they a lot of people they're not gonna be competitive. Mm -hmm. They're not gonna be like wishing be in a competition, but they they want to be on the gym and learn the martial art. Mm -hmm. So it's, it's a big number number for you just to okay everybody's gonna do a stand up today no you can't do that right right you know what i mean you gotta respect you know other people in the academy too that's what we try to do mm -hmm. that's one of the reasons i bring i'm trying to bring gabriel to work on a so far in chicago because we have a very similar style mm -hmm. and he's a very accomplished fighter mm -hmm. so i think it's going to work pretty good and I'm very happy to be here with him today you know my pleasure this podcast with <laughs> yeah my students yeah. It's nice. thanks so much and, and let me just say um you know like like i i recognized all the names you rattled off um as absolute legends that you've worked with that you came you you, you came up under murillo and and, and amore and, and whatnot I, I don't know if everyone i mean obviously the older guys do but i don't know if everyone really appreciates just like the veritable who's who of of fantastic amazing legendary black belts that you've had a an opportunity to work with coming up in your training that's that's super awesome <laughs> i mean that's that's very impressive he fought against to uh and also fought against ribeiro, plenty of legends too uh, uh, saulo ribeiro saulo. he fought against saulo ribeiro uh godoy he fought against like names like big like world champs mm -hmm. uh the last world champ uh, the the last world master you fought against to what is his name from barra gracie he's a world champ too uh He's here in Chicago, Illinois. Uh, Escorrega. Escorrega. <laughs> Barra Gracie. Who's that? Oh, uh, Carlos Lemos. Oh, Lemos. 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 Yeah. Uh, Junior. His nickname is Escorrega. <laughs> oh, is that what? Okay. <laughs> Carlos, I was say, yeah, I we've had him on the podcast. Yeah, he lost in the final. See, the Masters nowadays is so hard to make to a finals, to semifinals or final, and become a, a world master champ because we have all these old, like, mm -hmm. you know, adult, you know, uh, champion and IBJJF like enjoy the master division now and face them on the final is like mm -hmm. it's face like a family guys a legend like right there in, in the front of you right. so, oh my god I just got my black belt I have to fight Saulo Ibeiro <laughs> oh my goodness you know, have you ever come across uh, Hobson Mora yes I fought against him too yeah. I lost once in the Brazilian uh Brazilian Nationals team. Uh, how can Brazilian I say? Brazilian National Team. Yeah. Is that right? I, I, <laughs> I, was, I was brown belt, I think, and he was black, something like this. And he beat me by two points. Uh, <laughs> He's good. Yeah. He's quite good. He's good. He's good. Yeah. He fought Shaolin too, right? Shaolin. Shaolin it was my first, my, my first fight of my black belt against the Shaolin. Yeah. Well, welcome to jiu-jitsu yeah. there. Okay. <laughs> yeah. So it's, just, it's the never been one. easy, right? right, it's right, just right. Never. I yeah. fought against Leo Vieira too in, in, in when he was the best, you know. Uh, yeah, many names. <laughs> yeah.
I love how he says that and he's so casual about it. Right. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> That's great. Le- like, Leonardo Santos is, is a good name too. Is the thing is he he come up with like a very good generation of jiu-jitsu fighters. Right, for sure. And he was like raised with them like at the same time. So they have to fight each other all the time. Yeah. So nice. it's, and after that they still fight him because Biel like 43 right now, but he still like enjoy masters and wars and yeah. they have to face each other like like back in the day, yeah, you right. know what I mean. But nowadays they come and see each other, they hug each other. They're like, there's sure. no like more, like such a, you know, that competitive. Not so much aggression. Yeah, yeah, yeah. so aggression. It's like more like old style. We yeah. shake your hands. By the end of the day, we go and have a fun. You know what right. I mean? So it's right. fun. But big name Miguel, uh, Biel has me, yeah. you know, fighting against you, man. Well, I'm, I'm I'm looking forward to more training with you. You're gonna be here for another what? Two weeks? Three weeks? He'll be here, I think, into July second, right? Yeah. July second. Yes. Yeah. So, lots of training. Lots yeah. of training. Yeah. Maybe we get maybe we get Javier to come uh, for an open mat and do a little training with uh, Sounds Gabriel. Good. That'd be is fun. Is everybody invited yeah. to yeah. academy? Open mat and academy on um, so far. Is everybody welcome yeah. to come? There's no, there's no lot of politics. No. You just come, have fun. You know, right. no ego. Leave your ego outside the door. Outside the door. Come, have a good training, and then get some sweat. Yeah, yeah. This was the awesome, the best part. And Gabriel, you're. On, I know you're on social media, Instagram. You're on Instagram. Yeah. Is it Gabriel I, Wilcox? On Gabriel Instagram? Wilcox. Yeah, basically, yeah. W i l l c o x. Yes. Yeah, two two L's in there. Two L's. Yes. <laughs> awesome. Well, I really appreciate you coming in and doing the podcast, and Alex. Also, thank you. Always a pleasure. Thank, thank good to you. be back. Thanks, right? Yeah, yeah. And Andre for allowing driving him out here. And I know uh, Marley's in the car. I know you got you've been checking on him. I don't know how's Marley doing. Good. Yeah, he's doing no the right. academy. He's our the mascot. academy dog. Yeah, yeah. our mascot. <laughs> Just so nobody freaks out. The windows are the windows are down. It's a nice day out. The it's, dog is fine. The dog is good. <laughs> <laughs> awesome. All right. Well, I appreciate you guys coming in, and uh, we'll see you guys later. Well, All right. See you. Bye. Thank you. Thank you. Hey, everybody. Thanks for tuning in. For more information about Grappler Union Podcast, you could visit us at our website at grapplerunion.com. You can follow us on Instagram at Grappler Union. Please like us on Facebook. Be sure to subscribe on iTunes. And all of our episodes are available on our YouTube channel. Say what? Be sure, be sure to subscribe. Yeah, subscribe to all that shit. <laughs> um, you got to do another take, right? Oh.